Eid Mubarak to all of you. Good evening and welcome to News at 10 on TV3. Coming to you live from our studio here at Adesanwe in Accra. I am Martin Esie Dudati. This bulletin is also live on our website, 3news.com. Here are the highlights we have for you today. Ghana's borders will remain closed till the 31st of May. And that's according to President Akufuado in his last COVID-19 address to the nation. While the cases and death toll in Ghana and its neighboring countries such as Nigeria continue to increase, many fear if the borders should be opened anytime soon, it could spell doom for the sub-region. The Sekendi Takrade Metropolitan Assembly intends to close down the Takrade market circle. According to the Assembly's task force on COVID-19, traders who were relocated to the Takrade Jubilee Park have found their way back to the market circle and are disregarding the COVID-19 safety protocols. Now the World War II veteran, Private Joseph Ashite Hammond, has ended a 14-kilometer walk with a call on all and sundry to join the fight to kick COVID-19 out of Africa. The seven-day walk aimed at raising $600,000 to support frontline workers in Africa has ended. The Ghana Statistical Service, in collaboration with the United Nations Development Programme and the World Bank, is conducting a business tracker survey from Tuesday, May 26 to June 20, 2020. This is aimed at tracking the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on businesses in Ghana to inform policy directions to alleviate the impact of the disease on businesses. Thirty-five percent of admissions are the mother and baby unit of the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital in the Ashanti region are babies with jaundice. Pediatricians are worried rare cases of neonatal jaundice are also being recorded. All right, so those are the major stories making headlines here in Ghana. Let's find out what's happening elsewhere around the world, starting from uh, recent comments by the World Health Organization. They are saying, uh, warning countries where coronavirus has slowed down, and they are saying that um, countries where the coronavirus infections are declining could still face uh, an immediate second peak if they let up too soon on measures to halt the outbreak. The World Health Organization emergencies head, Dr. Mike Ryan, told an online briefing the world is still in the middle of the first wave of the coronavirus outbreak. Elsewhere, the World Health Organization has temporarily paused the use of the anti-malarial drug, the hydroxychloroquine, uh, which is part of a global effort to find a cure for the COVID-19. The organization's executive board made the decision following a study published in the medical journal, The Lancet, on May 20, that showed that the drug increased mortality rates among COVID-19 patients. And uh, Nigeria's president, a very interesting story on the continent, Nigeria's president, Mohamed Buhari, has said that Nigerian farmers must produce enough for the country to eat, saying that the country has no money to import food. The comments follow concerns around food security, food insecurity during the COVID-19 pandemic and ra rising food prices in Africa's most populous nation. According to the UN's Food and Agricultural Program, even before the COVID-19 crisis, farmers had not been able to satisfy demand for Nigeria's population, uh, which is near a little over 200 million people. And finally, Hong Kong's security chief has said that the territory needs a controversial new security law to tackle growing terrorism. 
John Lee said that the city had become shrouded in the shadow of violence. After months of quiet, this weekend saw a fresh surge of protests against uh, the government uh, after the government in Beijing proposed a security law that would radically change Hong Kong's unique status. And so those are the highlights that we have for you both locally and internationally. Let's zoom straight to our first story starting uh, from someone who's dedicated his life both to save lives and also for a good cause. So World War II veteran, that is Private Joseph um, Ashite Hammond, has ended a 14-kilometer walk with a call on all and sundry to join the fight to kick COVID-19 out of Africa. The seven-day walk is aimed at raising $600,000 to support frontline workers in Africa. The walk, which began on Tuesday, May 18, has one goal, to raise funds to support COVID-19 fight in Africa. Each day, the 95-year-old World War II veteran, Private Joseph Ashite Hammond, covered two kilometers along the popular Osu Oxford Street, sweating to attract funding. The target was $600,000 to help frontline workers and vulnerable war veterans in Africa. The final two kilometers walk on Monday was this time extended to the Black Star Square. Private Hammond was joined by some military officers and friends who continued to cheer him on. Come on, to go. Come on. He began from the usual bloom bar inside Osu, went through the Osu Cemetery, across Paul's Stadium, the 28th February Cross Road, before ending at the Independence Arc, where a number of veterans lined up to receive him. Private Joseph Ashiti Hammond called for support from all to kick COVID-19 out of the continent of Africa. Little drops of water makes a mighty ocean. So your little, even one city, you contribute. At the end of the day, it will be very colossal amount which we will use to address this issue. Our aim is to eradicate completely COVID-19 from the face of Africa. He reminded Ghanaians to strictly observe all the protocols to fast track the fight against the pandemic. Yes. I'm enjoying all to applaud him for a yeoman's job done. Away from that, the Ghana Statistical Service, in collaboration with the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the World Bank, is conducting a business tracker survey from Tuesday, the 26th of May to June 20, 2020. This is aimed at tracking the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on businesses in Ghana, uh, which will go a, a long way to um, inform policy directions to alleviate the impact of the disease on businesses. The survey, known as the Business Tracker, is expected to involve the use of telephone interview for data collection. It will identify and measure the impact of the coronavirus outbreak on small, medium and large-scale establishments operating in the country. The Business Tracker will also assess measures put in place by businesses to mitigate the impact of COVID-19, as well as efforts to build better recovery for businesses. The outcome of the survey will enable government and development partners come out with measures to alleviate the impact of the disease on businesses. Government statistician Professor Samuel Kobna Enim noted results from the survey will inform policy direction in protecting jobs and safeguarding progress of the sustainable development goals. The findings will also provide insight into keeping the promise of the African continental free trade area alive as a tool to handle future pandemics and protect jobs and businesses. The Ghana Statistical Service assured owners of establishment that information provided on businesses will not be disclosed to anyone or entity in any form. The data collection does not require payment of money. All right, so now let's go to the western region. The Takrade uh, Metropolitan Assembly intends to close down the Takrade market circle. According to the Assembly's task force on COVID-19, traders who were relocated to the Takrade Jubilee Park have found their way back to the market circle and are disregarding 
the COVID-19 safety protocols. As part of efforts to contain the spread of the coronavirus, the Sekendi Takrade Metropolitan Assembly decongested major markets in the metropolis. Traders selling at the inner and outer perimeter of the Takrade market circle were relocated to the Jubilee Park. One month on, some of the traders have found their way back to the market circle. These recalcitrant traders were seen exhibiting their wares in front of stores, impeding movement of prospective buyers. According to them, the action is justified since they are recording low sales at the Jubilee Park. We came back to the market circle because business was very slow. Heard of the Sekendita Krande Metropolitan Assembly Tax Force. On COVID-19, James Obeng Jr. expressed concern about the development. At a point in time, I realized that around 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, the woman from the Jubilee Park comes back to the market circle to crowd. Several efforts have been made to get this woman to go back to the Jubilee Park. But once you go there, they see you, they run into the market. When you are not there, they come back. He explained the assembly is scheduled to meet to consider the possibility of closing down the markets. Already, the assembly's information van has since Saturday been announcing to the traders about the possibility of closing down the markets this week. We are not closing all the markets within the metropolis. It is only the tech riding market and precisely the women who trade around the market circle. They are causing that problem. They are not practicing the protocols with regard to fiscal distancing or social distancing. So the assembly was expecting that by now they have accepted an and arrange for the fiscal distancing. Those who are there are, are now back to the Jubilee Park. Then the assembly can say, okay, now that we have adopted what we want or what will suit the area, we will reverse that. But if it's still ongoing, it's up to Mesek tomorrow to take a decision. Meanwhile, the Sekendi Takradi Metropolitan Assembly Task Force on COVID-19 has arrested 10 people refusing to close down their recreational centers. The assembly has 150 confirmed cases of COVID-19. In other news this evening, a non-governmental organization, Clicks Africa Foundation, has, be, has come to the aid of Asabia Atupri Daku, a single mother with a 17-year-old son who is living with cerebral palsy. The foundation also paid an amount of 7,200 Ghana cities as two-year rent advance for both mother and son. TV3 on May 17 aired the plight of Asabia Itupri, Dako, and her 17 years old son living with cerebral palsy. One of their biggest worries was how to pay their rent after they were served with eviction notice and didn't have any hope. The most challenging experience I'm going through is being injected from this place. Accommodation may not be their worries any longer, as Clicks Africa Foundation, a non-governmental organization that trains youth with special needs in vocation skills, has made a donation of 7,200 Ghana cities for two years rent advance for Madame Asabia and her son, Caleb. Executive Director of Clicks Africa Foundation, Mary Amwa Kofo, who made the donation, said she was touched by the story on TV3. We have just presented um, 7,200 to um, Caleb and Antia Sabia, and then the uh, house owner is also here, which we are just going to pay. She expressed gratitude to all who contributed to make the donation possible. Madame Asabia Etupri Dako and her son Caleb expressed gratitude for the gesture. Okay, thank you. Madame Etupri Thank you and God bless you. Okay, so that's sign language to say thank you and God bless you. Others who want to remain anonymous have also made some cash donations. But Caleb's request still remains. If a Samajan will be listening from where he is. He wants him to help him get a computer for himself. The moving forward man, he's referring to uh, the president of Ghana. That's how he described the moving forward man. Uh, president Akufuadu should do what? Buy you a house. So that is Caleb's request. 
Caleb is a football fanatic and would not miss any match of a Samoyan. He is also a passionate fan of a president. This is still news at 10 on TV3. I am Martin Nesiedu Dati. Stay with us. We have more stories for you shortly. Welcome back to News at 10 on TV3. 35% of admissions at the mother and baby unit of the Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital are babies with jaundice. Pediatricians are worried rare cases of neonatal jaundice are also being recorded. Beatrice Spiogabra has more on this report. Neonatal jaundice within 7 to 10 days of life is one of the top five causes of death in newborns in Ghana. This could be as a result of mixing of baby and mother's blood at birth, an enzyme defect in red blood cell, infections or other causes. Neonatal jaundice, if not identified early, could lead to brain complications and even death. The complications can lead to the baby developing epilepsy disorder, learning disability, movement disability and hearing loss. An expert at the mother and baby unit of the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, Dr. Nana Rekubrobi, disclosed eight out of ten preterm babies have joined these. She said parents should look out for yellowish discoloration of the skin, lips and eyes, which are major danger signs. Suddenly, the baby that was previously breastfeeding well is no longer feeding as well as he used to. The baby has a temperature of 37.9. Baby has suddenly become very weak. The cry is very poor. You know, barely moving the legs. No longer as active as he used to be. Or any danger sign that accompanies the yellowing is a problem you need to bring to the hospital. Lack of information on the disease and ignorance in treatment methods is leading to increase in the cases of deaths and complications. Usually when a baby is born, in the first week of life, most people think that the baby shouldn't be brought out in the open because of evil eyes. So the baby is kept indoors for the first week. And usually when you're indoors, you might not be able to pick up that the baby is changing color. Treatment of the neonatal jaundice include a phototherapy process where the jaundice baby is placed under blue light. The Pediatric Society of Ghana is spearheading an educational campaign in the month of May to create more awareness about neonatal jaundice. Mother of a joined a baby told TV3 she had been informed to place her baby yeah, under morning sun for the joined to clear, but that did not help. The Pediatric Society is encouraging mothers to bring their newborn babies out every morning to check the color of the eyes for early detection of yellowish coloration. Let's switch our attention to some politics now. The national chairman of the People's National Convention, the PNC, has cautioned the Electoral Commission against attempts to compile a new register despite strong opposition. Bernard Mona said that the commission's entrenched position could spark serious misunderstanding within the political spark. This Electoral Commission is taking the anger of the people of Ghana for granted. When it boomerangs, and no one finds space, they should not blame anyone. When you have your national passport and it expires, what do you do? You take the old card passport, go to the national passport, then they give you a new one. You have a voter ID card, which we have used for presidential elections twice. We have used for parliamentary elections twice. We have used for by-elections. We have used that recently to elect assembly members. We have used that to create new regions. We want to throw that card away, that no one can use it to obtain a voter ID card. You think that it will be easy? The national chairman of the People's National Convention again called on the Electoral Commission to reconsider its stance. Most of the people, and I'm sure you, who probably even went and registered for the card, you are here to obtain your card. You are asking people to use national passport. I got my passport using my voter ID card. 
I obtained my national passport using my voter ID card. You are telling me that the voter ID card that enabled me to obtain the national passport is not qualified to enable me to obtain a voter ID card. But the passport which I used, the voter ID card to obtain, is valid for. What kind of mindset is this? He further questioned the number of people who have the national ID and passport. Joseph Armstrong, good, I'll agree. TV3. Now, as Ghana braces up for the lifting of the ban on social gathering, a section of NEMA residents have implored government to maintain some of the protocols. According to them, some sanity has been restored to one of the largest Zongo communities in the country, which needs to be maintained. George Queening has more in the following report. NEMA is one of the largest Zongo communities in the country. The population of Nima and its neighboring communities is about 2,909,643. Though residents admit the celebration of the Edo Fito was greatly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, the communal spirit was still existent. What some fear is, many Muslims might ignore all social gathering protocols during Edo Adha, which is yet to be celebrated. I'm trying to contact the chiefs and the opinion leaders in the community to let them know that once this thing does not happen in this idyll, idyll uh, fitted, they should not relax. You should make sure that it will not happen either idyll harder without or COVID-19. We should make sure that this thing has brought a certain discipline in our society that we are going to abide by it. While some believe the pandemic has taken a toll on lives and property, others were quick to admit it was a blessing in disguise. Even though the coronavirus is a pandemic, but to some of us, it has, it has brought in a discipline to this ED, ED fitting. Like almost 15 or 20 people will be at the hospital. But because, but because of the strict measures that has been put in place, even one casualty, we are yet to record it. A visit to the Nima market revealed the need for more sensitization on social distancing. Traders were going about normal business with no adherence to safety protocols. Baba al Haji was in a dilemma as to why markets were not closed but religious centers were closed as he believed these centers provide essential service. We are used to large gatherings going to places, meeting people, shaking and hugging. So if all of a sudden you are telling people to avoid that, I think it takes a whole lot of psych up there to get used to the new normal. This is Nima and this is an unusual scene. The fact that it's relatively calm. Mostly a day after the eight celebrations, it's mostly busy with people and music. But it's missing because of the pandemic. And also here at Nima, people like shaking their hands and they are always together. And that is part of their culture. And for them, it will take a longer time for them to adjust to the new normal. And so from Nima, Josh Quinn reporting for TV3. And here in the studios of TV3, I am Martin Esiedudati. Thank you very much for watching. There is more news on our website, 3news.com. You have a good evening as always. Stay positive. Bye for now.